John Beltran back with Dave Urick. The Beat Diggers for the second consecutive week will receive the opening kickoff. And we heard head coach Reed call during Beat Digger Blastoff say that they'll utilize maybe Matos Garcia in a variety of ways. And it's got to be a good idea, Dave, because he's such a good athlete that if you have him strictly under center, that could be an issue when you need him on the outside as well. You need him to operate starting at other positions outside of just quarterback. Well, you run into that some years. You know, you got to get the ball in your best people's hands, and we've said that a lot of times late in the playoffs where we got to get the guys that are the touchdown scorers and the point scorers, you got to get the ball to them. And, you know, Brush has to develop that character right now and that identity of who that leader is, who's the go-to guy. And it's neat that Coach Call's starting to make that that uh, commitment right now to to what he's going to do this year. Opening kickoff is brought to you by Buildings by Design, the experience to complete your project from start to finish. Get the quality you deserve in your building by starting your build project right. Start with Buildings by Design. And to kick it off will be Levi, check that, Gary Rodriguez. And of course, as expected, back deep to receive for the B-Diggers are Clay Shaver along with Baby Maltos Garcia. It's just a beautiful night here. You know, no wind. All the flags around the field are hanging straight down. The bright sun shining off those aluminum bleachers a few of the digger parents are sitting on. Not a, not a huge digger following tonight. Well, they might still be filing in, but uh, I think the big digger fans, despite the loss last week, are anticipating a victory because... There's no doubt they faced the best team they played. They'll play all season last week. Oh, for sure. That that Fort Morgan team's good. You heard a lot of people say, what happened to the Diggers? But you got to realize they played the real deal. Rodriguez, the right-footed kicker, will kick it off for the Rebels. It's headed towards the sideline and out of bounds at about the five-yard line. So the B-Diggers will start the drive with some very good field position as they don't re-kick anymore. B-Diggers will start at the 35-yard line, or 30-yard line. Oh, now the officials, so one's got it at the 30, the other's at the 35. Yeah, okay, that's what I figured. I was wondering why they're going back to the 30. So the B-Diggers will have it. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. We'll get to the starting line up here momentarily. Line up with the left hash mark. Trent Mounts is the quarterback. Three big diggers in the backfield. On first and ten from the 35. The junior will hand it off on the counter to Shaver. Running left and then he's hit after a gain of one at the 36-yard line. It'll be second down. And nine to go for the bead diggers along the offensive line. Tristan Volk, Raymond Miller, the centers Leo Libanos, Randy Woodward, and Riggs Tan. You've got Clay Shaver, of course, Baby Matos Garcia, and Aaron Williams. And Trent Mount, as I mentioned. Reed Hall, the tight end, on the left side. Second down and nine. We'll call it the 37 after a gain of a short two. In motion to the right is Matos Garcia. And there is the pitch to Aaron Williams, swinging it to the outside, back towards the middle, at the 40, carrying defenders across the 40 to about the 42. We'll give Williams five yards in the play. Set up a second down. Check it, a third down and three as the tackle was made over there by Jaden Rivera, 5'9", junior linebacker for Weld Central. The B-Diggers are basically in a no-huddle here, Dave. Yeah, coming out in that double tight and just trying to pound the football like they did last week when they scored that touchdown. Third down and three from their own 42-yard line. Three in the backfield. The pitch right to Matos Garcia. First down at the 45-yard line as he swung it towards the right sideline. And he barely got across that 45, but it's enough for a B-Digger first down. And the pickup, let's see, it's about, yeah, we'll give him close to four yards in a play. A couple of defenders in there, including Gage Heese, a junior. The B Diggers have it at their own 46 yard line. First down and 10. They want to shorten the game. Just power football with some sweeps as well to utilize the perimeter. Mount under center. From the 46 with a long count. Hand off of the counter to Shaver. Running left back to the middle. Tries to skip over a defender across the 50. 
to the 49. It's a gain of five. As the hit was made once again by Gage Heese. Second down and five to go. Again, the Bee Diggers are in a no huddle. As they're in Weld Central Territory at the 49-yard line. All the diggers looking to the sideline. Lyman and everybody looking to see what Coach Call calls. That was your first punt of the year. Handoff to Matos Garcia, swinging it to the right side. Tries to escape out of a tackle, but too much penetration there. No gain. It'll be third down and five as a number of Rebels were in the backfield, including Rivera, and quite frankly... Baby was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he broke a tackle right there at the line of scrimmage, and then he he tried to take it straight towards the sideline, but that linebacker just flew up so fast he didn't have a chance to get his shoulders turned upfield. Third down and five to go from the 49 in Weld Central Territory. Could be four down territory for the B-Diggers as well. Mount play action. Looking, lofting it out to the left, and it's off the hands of Matos Garcia, incomplete. He was wide, wide open, then he got turned around. He would have had a first down easily up the left side. Now it's fourth down. By the way, the starting lineup brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Proud to be Northeast Colorado's locally owned hometown savings and loan with locations in Fort Morgan, Sterling, and Brush, available 24-7 for your banking needs. That play was wide open, Dave. Yeah, he caught that on this near hash mark in front of the Weld Central bench, and you know, or he was going to try to catch it there, and, and uh, just a little bit too high. There was nobody between him and the end zone. Yeah, well-designed play. Fourth and five from the Weld Central 49. The B-Diggers are going for it. Triple set backfield. Mount on fourth down. Play action, looking to throw underneath. The pass is caught along the right sideline. First down inside the 35 to about the 34. It's a gain of 15, and that is the other tight end for the bead diggers. Nope. Yeah, we don't have that name on our roster. That's why the public address announcer couldn't identify it either. So first and 10, we'll try to find out from one of the assistant coaches who that B-Digger is wearing, 84. First and 10 from the 34. There's the handoff, right side, Matos Garcia. He swings it to the outside, inside the 25, and he tries to bust out of a tackle. He's got a first down at the 24-yard line. They might give him the 23. And the B-Diggers already have picked up. Picked up a few first downs. They got, that's a gain of 11. And it's first down and 10 at the 23-yard line. Again under center with Shaver in motion to the left. There's the handoff to Williams right up the middle inside the 20, and he bulls his way to close to the 16-yard line. It's a gain of seven. That was the ninth play of the drive for the B-Diggers. And, Dave, you've got to be impressed with the the passing early by Trent Mount, two, yeah. two, uh, even though one was incomplete. Just found out from Arturo Maltos Garcia, one of the assistant coaches, that was Daniel Labarca that caught that pass. Okay, he's on the roster, but he's got a different number. Now we've got second down. We'll call it three to go for the Weld Central 16. First drive of the game, no score. Hard count by Mount. The counter left side. Shaver's got a seam to the outside of the 15, along the sideline to the 10, and then he's still on his feet. Inside the five to about the three. And that's a gain of about 13. First and goal for the B-Diggers as Clay Shaver picks up another first down for Brush to their fourth of this drive. And the B-Diggers are eating up some time. Well, over four minutes have been elapsed. Yeah, a lot different offensive scheme than we saw last week with the Diggers just coming out and pounding that football, trying to run it off tackle and bouncing it outside when they have to. William Shaver and Baby Matos got see in the backfield. First and goal from the three. Mount to hand it off. Baby right side. And he's into the end zone. Lowering his head and his shoulders. And he scores. And the B Diggers lead. Six to nothing. Three yards by Baby Matos Garcia. So Brush lined up in a power eye formation that time. Matos Garcia was in the back. And he just followed his blockers there in that B gap. Just wide open. And he, you know, he didn't sprint up the hole. You can tell he kind of picked his way and and found the open spot. Jaron Peterson dealing with a broken finger, but he's there to attempt the extra point. Perfect snap. 
The kick is up, and the kick is right down the middle. 7.40 to go, opening quarter in Keensburg. It's Brush 7, Weld Central nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Ball is taken at the 10 on the ensuing kickoff. Some room across the 30 to about the 32-yard line, a return of 22. And that is Isaiah V. Hill as the B-Digger touchdown. Three yards by Baby Maltos Garcia. 65-yard drive in four minutes and 20 seconds. Brought to you by MMI International and buying a mixer feeder truck. Nothing compares to the MMI design, craftsmanship, and service. Your operation deserves the best. MMI International, 842-5161. It'll be at the 32 officially. First and 10 for Weld Central with a backs and an eye. There's the handoff to the deep back and a big hole across the right side, across the 35 to the 40. It's a gain of eight for Jaden Rivera before the tackle is made by a couple of bead diggers on that left side. Yeah, just running off tackle and, you know, they come out of that eye formation and, you know, he picked his way, but he showed a lot of speed, kind of zigzagged his way through that line of scrimmage and then opened it up. Second down, and we will call it two to go for Weld Central. Again, the backs remain in an eye. Hand off to the D-back Rivera. First down, up the left side to the 44, maybe the 45. It's a gain of five. Aaron Williams had the first contact on the Weld Central running back. Just getting blown off that line of scrimmage a little bit right now. Diggers up there on that line are going to have to do a little better job of holding their ground. Well, Central not doing anything fancy. Basically the same formation. The first time they ran it to the tight end side, that time they run over to the flanker side. First and 10 for Weld Central at their own 45-yard line. The B-Diggers holding a 7-0 lead in Keensburg. Both teams looking for their first victories of the year. Again, the backs remain in an eye, and two B-Diggers jumped, but I think the B-Diggers are pointing at a Rebel. The quarterback, by the way, is Brian Goodka. And, oh, it's going to go, I believe, against the Rebels. Now the officials are conferring. Well, let's see what that's all about. No offsides against Brush. You know, guys that jumped that time, they step back, they're hitting their own helmets. They were so mad at themselves. And maybe if they wouldn't have done that, you never know if the officials would have went ahead and called it against Weld Central. But I think since we admitted guilt, they called the penalty on us. There's the give right up the gut. And I believe that was the fullback. And it's a gain of about... Uh, a couple of yards to the 48, if even that. On that quick hitter there to Alex Reese. Be second down and three to go. And Miller on the tackle. For Weld Central in beat digger territory. 5.45 to go in the opening quarter. It's brush seven, Weld Central nothing. But the Rebels are now threatening, trying to get into the end zone, even though they're not in the red zone yet. Two receivers out to the right under center. Goodka, five-step drop, throws it up the right side. Wide open, caught at the 30. Up the right side to the 20. Back to the inside to the eight-yard line. And out of bounds is Devontae Fleming. A beat digger breakdown in the secondary. And it's a gain of 39. First and goal for the Rebels. Yeah, just a great play there by Weld Central. You know, they line up with the wide receiver and a flanker on the same side. And Brush in the years past, we would have called that a 400 formation they just sent their wide receiver straight down the field and good could hit him right on the money and we didn't have a corner out there to make the coverage first and goal at the nine for weld central the deep back once again is rivera he's got the football on the pitch right looks for a c but aaron williams is going to throw him for a loss of one Maybe two back to the 11. It'll be second down and goal for the 11 for Weld Central. With 5-10 to go in the opening quarter, the Beat Diggers up by a touchdown. They scored in their opening drive going 65 yards. That blitzing defense really took advantage of Weld Central's backfield. They didn't run that play very fast and, and uh, it gave our linebackers a great chance to catch them from behind and throw them down. 
on second down and goal. With a football resting at the 11. Goodka's now in a shotgun. Two receivers split each side. He's got the snap. Play action. Throw over the middle. It's caught for a touchdown. 11 yards away. And I believe that's the same one. Fleming on the slant pattern who caught it. And Weld Central is to within one. It's brush seven. Weld Central six. You know, they didn't really, they didn't really do a lot of fancy stuff there. The kid just... You know, he lined up wide, went down the field a couple of yards, and then just made that sharp slant, got in front of our corner, and just had the body position to make the make the great catch after a, a perfect throw. Zach Fulmer to attempt the extra point. The snap is there. The kick is up, and that kick looks like it's off to the left. It is. 4.39 to go in the first quarter. Brush 7, Weld Central 6 on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Clay Shaver returns the ensuing kickoff across the 30 to the 35, hit at the 37-yard line. And the Bee Diggers will have the ball there. After a very impressive six-play, 68-yard drive in two minutes and 54 seconds. 11-yard pass from Goodka to Fleming. Now the B-Diggers have it at their own 37-yard line. With 4.32 to go here in the opening quarter. Mount will hand it off. Left side. It's a big hole for Shaver. And he's got nearly a first down. That might be, is it a face mask near the end of the play? Gets to about the 47-yard line. It would be a gain of 10. What did you see there, Dave? Might have be a sideline infraction, too. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you what, out of that power eye, oh, Shaver, he didn't waste any time. Hit that hole hard. Yeah, it is a sideline warning. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers at their own 47-yard line. Now the adjustments the Bee Diggers will have to make. Oh, it is a, Okay. What do they got here? Second, it is second and short, but the first down marker for some reason, I don't, I don't know what they're doing over there. The first down marker, they're not moving the chains, and they haven't measured. Goodness, which would indicate either <laughs> second and inches. It, Dave, it looks like a first down from here. It looks like a first down to me too, but I think everybody just kind of forgot oh, no, what no, happened no. there for a minute because the the down marker guy he just stood over there, and the official in the middle of the field was looking at a first down. Maybe even a second and one. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Ehrlich Toyota East and Fort Morgan will fit you into the car truck of your choice. Serving all of Northeast Colorado, Ehrlich Toyota East, and that is a first down for the bead diggers. Yeah, we are tweeting the scoring updates. I, I don't know if we have. Hopefully we don't have issues. That that can happen at times. If not, we will retweet them later if they're not going through. Three-yard run by Baby Matos Garcia. 11-yard pass from Goodka to Devante Fleming. That's the scoring so far in this game. First and 10 for the B-Diggers at their own 47-yard line. There's the give. Left side and trying to break a tackle of Shaver. And he's hit at the 50-yard line. He's gang tackled. And I mean gang tackled by about four Rebels. The initial penetration was by Gage Heese. And then cleaned up over there by Reese Mettler, a junior, a gain of two, second down and eight. Well, Central running a 5-3 defense and doing a lot of blitzing themselves. Just playing it pretty straight with the nose guard head up on our center, and every once in a while they, they eagle a, a tackle down, but not with any rhyme or reason behind it. Second down and eight to go from midfield. Trent Mount again is going to hand it off on the counter right side. Matos Garcia swings it to the outside of the 45. He's got the sideline. There is a flag down, and this one is coming back inside the 40 to about the 37, a gain of 13. But we're going to go backwards, Dave, and that flag was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, right there in that holding territory. And Like I said, Walt Central doing some blitzing. I'm not sure if one of our interior linemen had a hold on to uh, Dalton Robertson there in the middle to keep him from getting into the, the backfield. It's going to take it way back, probably to the 40. When you're shopping for new appliances, shop the best appliance store in Fort Morgan, B&B Appliance, with a full and complete line 
of Whirlpool Appliances. They'll help you find your perfect fit. B&B Appliance in downtown Fort Morgan. So the B-Diggers now will face a second down and about. Yeah, this is a good second and 18 from their own 40. And Brush has committed a couple of penalties in this game. That has hurt them, although they've worked their way out of these situations in past years, but this is a new team. Let's see what they do. Second and 18 from the 40. Two receivers out to the right, two to the left. And now, do we have a, no, we've got a Weld Central timeout. Let's take it with them. 3.32 to go, first quarter, brush seven. Weld Central six on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Out of the timeout, second and 18 brush at their own 40. Claver, Clay Shaver in motion, and there is going to be a fake by Mount, rolling to his right, throws on the run, and I believe it's intercepted on a dive out there at the 48-yard line. It was overthrown and picked off by Gutka. You know, it was a slick play, though. We tried to run that fly, that end around over here, and uh, had a lot of good misdirection. You almost thought Mount was going to have some room to run, but their defensive end came across the line of scrimmage and put him further back in the backfield, made him rush that throw, and never had a chance to set up. The Rebels have it at the beat digger 49-yard line, trailing 7-6, to 3.25 to go in the opening quarter. I've got less than half the football field to operate with to take the lead. Well, our defense is going to have to step it up. We seem to be doing a pretty decent job there up at, towards the line of scrimmage, but our secondary is going to have to do a little better job with their coverage. Gurka out of a shotgun. Receivers put left and right. Man in motion to the right and getting the handoff and running wide to the right with some room to the 45-yard line. Slips out of a tackle at the 40 down to the 39 maybe is Jake Urker. Close to a first down, a gain of nine. As Shaver made the tackle, the B-Diggers need more playmakers on defense, Dave, because last week they make a play and then it'd be a 20-yard gain. A play, then a 20-yard gain. They've got to put it together on consecutive plays. Yeah, exactly. they got to have that, that consistency there, but that's going to come. You know, we just got a little bit of inexperience out there, and guys have to learn how to put it together. Out of a shotgun, second down and one. Could be a simple handoff. No, rolling to his left is good. Looking to throw, setting up. Here comes the pressure. He gets out of it. There's a flag down. First down. Williams makes the tackle at the 36, but I would assume this is also coming back. Yeah, absolutely. Thrown just like it did against the Diggers last time. I'll tell you what, good could he dropped back. Looked like he was going to throw the ball, but I don't think there was ever a idea in his head he was going to throw it he just waited to, for that hole to open up and try to run that quarterback draw up the middle it is a hold against the rebels that football will be placed closer to midfield that second and one is going to turn into about a second and maybe 10 because the infraction was downfield so we'll call it about a second and 10 just inside the b digger 49 with 310 remaining first quarter both teams scored in their opening drives the b diggers just committed a turnover on drive number two again in the shotgun is good go there was movement there and there's the whistle looked like the right tackle over there caleb street came up just a little bit early dave yeah getting a little anxious there seeing the central uh, Rebels starting to throw their hands up in the air already. But they have to be feeling some frustration after what they went through last week as well. Absolutely. Well, that turns into like a four-yard penalty. <laughs> we'll call it a second and 14 at their own 47. They didn't really walk off the full five. Again, receivers split to the left and right, two each side with one setback. Good because in a shotgun. Has the football, roll to his left, still rolling, pressure coming backside, throws on the run, the pass is going to be incomplete. A diving attempt at the 42-yard line, and another flag is down, and that's at the 45-yard line of Weld Central, and I believe we're going to get another holding penalty. Yeah, it looked like our our uh, end over here on this side was trying to get into the backfield, and got held up. Well, that's brutal, Dave. Three penalties in a row. It was second and one moments ago. Yeah, we'll take them though. But that's credit to our tackles over here on this side, getting off the, 
getting off the line of scrimmage right when the ball snapped and putting those offensive linemen on their heels. I see the B-Diggers are going to take this penalty. It looks like they will. Find out why Morgan Community College is the best choice for your higher <laughs> education. Visit MCC online at morgancc.edu or stop by the campus for a personal advising session. Now it is second down from the 36-yard line, second and 25 to go for the Rebels. Two receivers again split each side. Goodka with a three-step drop, looks to throw, rolls to his right, sets up, hits, uh, throws, and it's incomplete. He was hit as he threw. If I said that in the right order, it would have made sense. Aaron Williams with some pressure along with Tristan Volk. It'll be third down. Yeah, Williams was on a blitz. He blitzed the A-gap. So our defensive line stemmed over. They all lined up to the right, one position to the right, and then right before they snapped the ball, they, they stemmed one position back over to the left, and then and then Williams shot that A-gap between the center and the guard. Was able to grab a hold of Goodka before our right when he threw the ball. Third down and 25 for their own 36-yard line. Again, same formation. Four receivers in on this play with one setback. Goodka out of the gun. Has the football. Throws a slant. It's complete at the 45-yard line. Breaking at the 50. Up the sideline to the 40. Very close to a first down. They needed 25. And they got 24. Rodriguez with the reception. And that was Gary Rodriguez who made the catch. And they're going to go for it, Dave. It makes sense on fourth and one. And again, the beat diggers pass defense after the gain of 24 was not good. And now Weld Central takes a timeout with 208 to go in the opening quarter. We'll keep it right here. You know, Goodka made a good move or a decent move. Or Rodriguez made a decent move there. He uh, just planted his right foot and went back to the middle. And you know, unfortunately, our corner on this side, he fell down, you know, right when that happened. And, and uh, he wasn't able to recover. And that's what left all that running room. Well, remember, this team scored 26 points last week against Davilon. It's a pretty good football team. So they've got some offense. The problem is they gave up 50. And the B-Diggers demonstrated on that first drive that they could move the ball on this team pretty easily down the field. And they shot themselves in the foot on the second drive. But now Weld Central trying to work their way out of a third and 25 situation, which is now fourth and one. At the B-Digger 40-yard line. Home of the 895 dinner menu during the week and the best prime rib and other great specials on Friday and Saturday. That is Atwood Steakhouse. Fourth and one. Fourth and two. For Weld Central. At the 40. Is Gurka going shotgun here? I believe he yep. is. Awaiting the snap. And no, that's a different player. And that's a first down. Up was that Rivera there who took the direct snap? Yep. Nope, it was Isaiah Vigil. And he dives to about the 38, a gain of two. And the drive continues for the Rebels. As the middle of the beat digger defensive line was there to make the play, but not in time. First and 10 for the Rebels. That was a good stop, but, you know, they were awful close to the down marker. They were going to have to make a tackle for loss in order to prevent that first down. Couldn't quite get her done. Inside of two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Brush seven, Weld Central six. First and 10 at the beat digger 38-yard line. Brian Goodkin, a shotgun. Has the football, hands it off right up the gut, and the big fullback, Alex Reese, drives inside the 35 to the 33. It's a gain of five. And getting up off the bottom of the pile for the bead diggers in on the hit was B.J. Hirschfeld. Second down and five in the Rebel offense. Even though they've hurt themselves, they have made some plays here. Yeah, big pass plays. Tell you what, that Reese is a load. Says he's 5'10". I guarantee he's in the 2'10 range. He's big. From the 33, second and five. Again, Goodka's in a shotgun. Goodka will throw it out on the left flat. The pass is caught to the 30 along the sideline to the 27. And let's see who caught that way across the Maverick field. Maverick Jones with the reception. I say Maverick Jones. I'm not sure who that is on the roster. He'll have the first down. Nonetheless, the first down is to the 27. 
A gain of six. Isaiah yeah, Isaiah Behill. That makes sense. Behill makes the catch. Yeah, I don't even see a Jones on this roster. At least a Maverick Jones. First and ten for Weld Central at the B Digger 27 yard line. Inside of 45 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Trips to the right. Goodka rolls to the right. Pressure coming, throws, and it's complete underneath to the 25 yard line. And then BJ Hirschfeld makes the hit at the 24 as it was caught by Gary Rodriguez, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven to go. They might be able to squeeze one more play in before the end of the opening quarter. They've completed four passes for 69 yards. Doing a good job just picking away at our corners out there. You know, we have some youth back there without a lot of experience, and they're going to have to learn how to make better reads and and close the gap. And that is the end of the first quarter with a score. Brush 7, Weld Central 6 on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran and Dave Urich back from Weld Central High School in Keensburg. 7-6 to six brush as we head to the second quarter. And the Rebels are threatening. Second down and 7 at the B-Digger 24-yard line. Second and 7. And this time the quarterback Brian Gutka is under center. Movement along the B-Digger defensive line. Back to throw. Lofts it up right side, and it's incomplete. Underthrown. Looked like it was intended for the tight end. Almost like a fade, but two B-Diggers were there defending the play. Third down. I'm surprised at that call, Dave. Yeah, I just tried, like you said, they just threw that bomb out there. They have a lot of height. That, that Dalton kid, he's over six feet. Robertson going against our sophomore, Ben uh, Brown, and... Ben can't be over 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, they worked their way out of a 3rd and 25 situation oh, earlier on this drive. Now it's 3rd and 7 from the 24. Four down territory for the Rebels. Gurka rolls to his left. Wants to throw. Has running room. Throws underneath. Caught first down inside the 15 to about the 11. Wide, wide open. Underneath for a gain of 13 yards. By the way, they got these dark numerals, tough to see. Dalton Robertson with the reception. Dalton Robertson makes the catch. At the 11 yard line. But first and 10 for Weld Central. They're knocking on the door once again. And the B Diggers have got to figure things out defensively. The deep man in the backfield is Rivera. On first down and 10 from the B Digger, 11. Let's see if Rivera gets the football. Gurkha's under center. He gives it to Rivera, running left. He's got a couple of yards, and then he lunges his way towards the seven for a gain of four. B.J. Hirschfeld, check that. It was uh, Randy Woodward in on the hit. Now they'll give him the eight, a gain of three, but it's second down in in a short seven. Well, Central's only been able to gain 31 yards on eight carries so far. Just killing us in the air. Second down down and about seven to go from the eight. Two receivers out to the right. No receivers to the left. Goodka under center. Goodka back to throw. Throws over the middle. The pass is caught for a touchdown on the slant. That might be Rodriguez again. Eight yards away. And Weld Central has taken the lead, and it is Gary Rodriguez. It's Weld Central 12 and Brush 7. Again, just that slant pattern matching a you know, good-sized kid up against our small corners. and you know, The corner's giving him a little bit of cushion there, and Weld Central taking advantage of it by getting their big bodies in front of us and throwing the slant. The ball was thrown behind him a little bit, but you know, just the size difference made it really difficult. Here comes the two-point conversion after the initial extra point was off to the left. Gurkha's in a shotgun. Rolls to his right. Now he pitches it out, and that's going to be nothing. Not sure if that's Rivera back there, but thrown for about a four-yard loss. So the two-point conversion is no good. 10.44 to go second quarter. Weld Central 12, brush 7 on 10.10 KSIR and KSIR.com. 11 plays, 49 yards and 4 minutes and 41 seconds 
Eight-yard touchdown catch by Gary Rodriguez. A short punt fielded by the B-Diggers at the 27 along the far sideline. Across the 30 to the 32. Man, there's such a glare in here. I think that was Colin Cole, a sophomore, who was able to grab that football. Yeah, Colin was actually in front of it, and, and the ball was kicked so short, and in between them and the back men, you know, he did a good job. He was very alertly ran back in there and picked it up and and uh, surged ahead with it. It was a good heads-up play there by Colin. Dave, I don't envision a three and out in this game, the way these offenses are going. First and ten from the 32. And now Matos Garcia is in a shotgun for Brush. And he will hand it off. Big hole up the middle for Shaver across the 40 to the 42. Might have gotten a 43. Rivera in on the hit. It's a gain of 10. If he doesn't have a first down, he missed it by an inch. Shaver's got 43 yards now on six carries. And Brush looked like they were going to look a little option there. A little option look and... They sure did fool the linebackers for Weld Central. They started running sideways looking for the pitch, man, and Shaver had it right up the middle. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. This Weld Central team, they're better than I thought, especially on offense. We know the B-Diggers have lack of experience defensively, but Weld Central's executing. Matos Garcia out of the gun, hands it off. Big hole for Shaver across the left side, across the 50 to the 49-yard line. They might backtrack him to the 50. But it's a gain of close to eight for Clay Shaver. Second down and a short two. And Shaver's going to go over 100 yards maybe by halftime if he gets off a big run. Yeah, he's got 51 yards now on seven carries. Well, Central's comfortable staying in that 5-3 defense. And every once in a while blitz. And that time I watched, they just hung back. And, boy, they got on their heels. Again, and a shotgun is baby. Second and two. And he's going to hand the football off right side. First down across the 45 to about the 43. Close to a gain of seven. And that time it was B.J. Hirschfeld for Brush. Gary Rodriguez made the hit for Weld Central. Weld Central that time, they they were in that 5-3 again, but they eagled their tackles down to over our guards and had a great offensive call there by running off tackle. First and 10 from the Weld Central 43. The Rebels lead the B-Diggers 12-7 in the second. Here's the handoff to Shaver across left tackle. He's got about five or six yards crossing the 40 to about the 38, maybe the 37-yard line. Efficient running by the B-Diggers. We'll give him five officially, second down and five to go for Brush, and they're doing nothing but running right now. Just some great play calling, too, as Weld Central was eagled down again, and Brush just runs it off tackle, figuring if they're not going to have somebody in that C-gap, they're just going to take advantage of it. Out of a shotgun, second and five. There is the gift to Aaron Williams across the left side. Still on his feet. Breaking tackles across the 30 to about the 28, the 29-yard line for Aaron Williams. And that's going to be a gain of 10. First down for the B-Diggers there. Third first down of the drive. Three carries, 22 yards. A little crossbuck action there as Aaron was lined up on the right side over here in that power eye and took the handoff running to the left. The hit was made by Dalton Robertson. First and 10 for the B-Diggers. At the Weld Central 28, again, out of the shotgun is baby Maltos Garcia. Has the football, and it's a busted play. He'll take off with it and run into the middle of the line of scrimmage. Somebody missed their assignment. He was able to gain a yard. Second down and nine at the 27, but somebody went the wrong way or didn't go in the right way. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it might have been baby going the wrong way too. Who knows? But, you know, the heads-up play that he had there was he didn't, you know, just sit on it. He tried to surge ahead for some yardage. Oh, he's got experience. There's no question about it. 8-19 to go. It is second down. And we're in the second quarter and nine from the 27. And now... We've got a whistle. Did Weld Central call their third timeout? They did. We've got 8.06 to go second quarter. It's Weld Central 12, Brush 7. This is 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Matos Garcia keeps the football across the 25 to the 24 on a second down and nine. He will gain three yards in the play. Right out of the Weld Central timeout. Third down and six to go for Brush. Plenty of time. 7.45 to go before halftime. I'm John Beltran with Dave Urig in game number two. 
of the season for both teams. Both teams lost their openers. On third down and six out of the shotgun. There is the pitch right to Shaver. Swings it to the outside. He's got a first down. He pulls his way towards the 16-yard line. Before there was contact made over there, Jaden Rivera made the hit. But let's give him nine yards and a B-digger first down at the 15. Yeah, just a quick hit or quick pitch. Diggers did a good job of hustling out there with their linemen, lead blocking, but... You know, Shaver's a big kid. When he gets the ball, he's going to be tough to tackle when he gets that head of steam up. First down and 10 for the Weld Central 15. The B-Diggers are looking to reclaim the lead. Hand off to Williams. Running left. There's a flag down. Hit at the 13-yard line. And this is what happened to the B-Diggers on their last drive. They committed a key holding penalty, and I think it's going to happen again, which would draw them back to about the 25-yard line, and that might force them to pass a little bit later on. And it is a hold against Brush. And that was the ninth play of the drive, and the B-Diggers were clean up to that point on the drive. But a second and eight instead is going to be about a first and 20. At the Weld Central 25-yard line. Now you stick with a run. I mean, it's not like they're gaining only two or three yards of play. They're rattling off some yards. Grocery meat and fresh deli counters and 24-hour gas, the Brush Grocery Cart. 1302 West Edison Street. In Brush. First and 20 for Brush. At the Rebel 25. Baby in that shotgun. Awaits the snap. Has the football. Is going to take off with the football and then have nothing. He had the pitch man, Clay Shaver. Instead he's tackled at the 26. Nobody's blocking Rivera. He gets in there quite a bit. And Dalton Robertson as well. It'll be second and long. We'll call it second at about 21. Well, remember, they're still in that 5-3, so they have a nose guard, two tackles, two de- defensive down. ends, and three linebackers. We have a center, two guards, and two tackles. They got us outnumbered over there when they're when they're blitzing, and that's what happened that time. They happened to guess right, blitzing the, the left side, right, where Garcia was going to try to run that option. and He wanted to pitch it, but he just couldn't because they were on top of him too fast. Now the quarterback is Trent Mount under center. Second and 21 from the 26. Now the B-Diggers call a timeout. That is brought to you by Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. Keep in mind when you're looking for someone to walk you through the insurance world, turn to the office of Greg Mullen and Brush, Home Auto Life and Health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call. 842-4555. So Brush will face a second down and 21 at the Weld Central 26. The B-Diggers have had very few negative plays on offense. The thing is, is the negative plays are the ones where you see penalty markers. Right. No, you just got to wonder what they're going to go with here, not having a lot of luck throwing the football, throwing it three times, just had that one completion for 15 yards to Albarca. Be interesting to see what they do. You know, Shaver's had a lot of big runs, picked up a couple of 10-yard carries, uh, another one for about... Uh, nine yards so you know they got those big carries there w- with the running game but it's going to take a couple of huge ones from here it's definitely not something they can do all at once if they don't have the the right play call brush has held the football for nearly five minutes and despite that amount of time they're still not in the red zone they were in the red zone but then the penalty drew them back Second and 21, back to throw is Mount, sets up, throws deep up the left side. It is caught underneath. That's going to be a first down and fighting his way inside the five. That is Mantos Garcia. I don't know if that ball was underthrown or not. There were two receivers out there. But it's a first down at the four. It's a gain of 22, first and goal for Brush. Impressive. Yeah, you know, he had two receivers like you were saying over there. You know, it's kind of confusing if he was thrown to the the first one or the second one, but you know, when right to Garcia, he was the first one in line, and Garcia made a nice catch. The official mark is the five, just inside the five. First and ten, handoff, Shaver, left side, pulls his way, and he's in. Barely touched, even though he lowered that shoulder, and he scores five yards away for Clay Shaver. 
And the Bee Diggers now lead the Rebels 13 to 12. 70 yards now for Shaver on 10 carries. Nice average. And like you said, just running a lot of power. And Diggers having a lot of luck running out of that power eye and, and that T backfield. That's a five minute and three second drive, 11 play, 68 yards. And now Brush will go for two to grab a three point lead. Mount under center. Will turn. He'll hand it off left side Shaver, and he walks into the end zone for the two point conversion. We have got 5.38 to go. Second quarter, Brush 15, Weld Central 12 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Return across the 25 to the 30 to about the 34 yard line. That's Isaiah Vigil. Return of about 19 yards for Weld Central. And it's first and 10 at their own 39, I should say. So making a bigger return of 24 yards. Good field position for the Rebels. With 5.32 to go before the break. And the B-Diggers leading by a score of 15-12 to after the five-yard touchdown run by Shaver. Now the B-Diggers need to make a play defensively. And we've got a flag down. Is that a delay of game or illegal participation? I believe it is. Whistle on the play. No, I mean... Too many guys. Oh, boy. It is against Brush. The B-Diggers had 12 on the field. Man. Now it's first and five at the 44. These mistakes will not happen later on in the season, Dave. Guarantee that. Yep, and it's going to happen with the young team. A lot of sophomores out there trying to figure it out. B. Hill in motion. The quarterback, Goodka, takes off of the football. First down to the 50, up the left side of the 45 before he's upended there. But it's a gain of 11 yards and a first down for Weld Central. The hits were made by Raymond Miller, Leo Libanos, and baby Matos Garcia. Yeah, quarterback draw all the way out of that shotgun. He didn't even hesitate. He just ran over here between the the guard and the tackle on their uh, offensive left side. First and 10 Rebels at the B-Digger 44-yard line. In the shotgun, the B-Diggers have not had a stop in the opening half. Goodka, five-step drop, throws it up the right side. This could be picked off, and it is intercepted at the 20 by Matos Garcia. Intended for Rodriguez, a terrible pass by Gurkha's baby was just playing center field. And that's going to happen when you got guys in your face. Diggers had a blitz and linebacker, Aaron Williams. Also one of our defensive linemen, I believe, was Randy Woodward. Both of those guys were right in his face when he tried to throw the football. Yeah, you're right, Dave. That certainly forced it, but he was better off holding on to the ball because <laughs> there was no way that was going to be complete. Now with an experienced defensive back in Matos Garcia, there to make the play. First and 10 for Brush at their own 20-yard line. Mount to hand it off to Shaver, running left side, a big hole across the 30. They're holding on to him. He's breaking a tackle to the 35 along the left far sideline. It's a gain of 15 for Shaver and another B-digger first down. Yeah, you know what really sold that as well was just the fakes as I watched Mount after he handed the ball off act like he had the ball on his hip, faking that bootleg around the side. Anybody that's played brush over these last few years remembers that bootleg very well. First and 10 for the B-Diggers at their own 35. Maltos got Sia, Shaver, and Williams in the backfield. There's the give to the deep man, Shaver. Another hole across the left side, up the sideline to the 50. Shaver in the secondary, and then he's going to be carried out of bounds after another sizable gain for Clay Shaver. He goes from the 35 to the Weld Central 37. That's a gain of 28. And Dave, he's got to be over 100, and he is. Yep, 113 yards now for him. Both Central sticking in that 5-3 defense, and they didn't blitz any linebackers that time, but their linebackers all stepped up, and they got caught up in the traffic as the Digger offensive linemen started to shove some of those defensive linemen backwards. First and 10 for the B-Diggers. There is the pitch left. Shaver again. Shaver's got to see him to the outside. Shaver has a first down. 
up to the 20-yard line inside the 15 as Shaver keeps going. Shaver cannot be stopped. And Shaver is down to about the 17-yard line. They'll give him the 16, a gain of 21. First down for the Bee Diggers. And Shaver is now at 134. Maybe yeah, he's not getting tired either. No, I'll tell you what. And, and Coach Call's just happy to keep giving him the ball. And I would be the same. You know, if it's working, don't change it. There's the give to Shaver. Left side, big hole inside the 15-yard line to about the 10. Maybe got more than that. Man, what type of shape is he in? I mean, that's four in a row. I think he got to about the 8-yard line. Let's see where it's marked. Well, you always hear about how good, you know, running backs can get when the when things are going in their, their favor and they develop that momentum and get in the rhythm of the game. And Coach Call's giving him that leash. Give him seven yards there. He's at 141, second down, and three to go for the nine. They're going to give it to Shaver again. On second down, Trent Mount with a long count. We'll hand it off this time to Matos Garcia. He swings it to the right side, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Jaden Rivera pounded him at the 10. He lost a yard. It'll be third and four to go for the Bee Diggers. We're at 3.35 to go before the break. It's brush 15, Walt Central 12. Matos Garcia has a touchdown as the shaver. Brush didn't really disguise anything that time or make any fake to shaver. You know, Maltos Garcia lined up in that deep eye out of that power eye formation, and they just handed him the ball over here on the right side. And he wanted to run in between the tackles. Pitch left to Shaver. Breaks out of a tackle to the five. Shaver to the pylon. Touchdown. Touchdown for Clay Shaver. Ten yards away. His second touchdown of the game. It's brush 21. Weld Central 12. You know, Coach Call just having a lot of success running over there behind Riggs Tan and Tristan Volk, those guys doing the job up there on that offensive line. 80-yard drive, six plays. And now the extra point to be attempted by Jaron Peterson. Off the hold of Baby. The kick is up. That's a beauty. Right down the middle, 3.11 to go, second quarter. Brush 22, Weld Central 12. You're listening to Brush B. Digger football on your home of the defending state champions, 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. There's the ensuing kickoff and breaking a couple of tackles and still on his feet is Rodriguez across the 35 to about the 36. Now, this is odd, Dave. I mean, it's very simple to keep score here in football. The scoreboard says 23 to 12. I've got 22 to 12. The B. Diggers had a touchdown, an extra point. Touchdown, two-point conversion, that's 15, and a touchdown and an extra point. So we'll have to see what that's all about. See if they fix that. I mean, we'd love the beat diggers to win, but not get a, a point that they don't necessarily have. Once again, six plays, 80 yards in a minute, 54. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. With 3.01 to go, second quarter. Man in motion to the right. And there's the give on the right side, swinging it to that side and across the 35 as he was back behind the line of scrimmage to the 39 was Zach Fulmer. Before the tackle was made over there, Aaron Williams was one of the beat diggers in on the play. It's a gain. Uh, we'll call it a gain of two. Second down and eight to go for the Rebels. Rebels have only run the ball ten times. And they have no timeouts left. So they might have to put it up unless they come up with a big running play. On second down, and eight to go from the 38, and a shotgun. Goodka rolls to his left. Plenty of room, throws underneath. Pass is caught. That's a first down to the tight end near the 50-yard line at the 49. It'll be a gain of 11. Aaron Williams made the hit on Edwin Carrillo. Now they're going to mark him at midfield, so 12 yards. That stops the clock for the movement of the chains. That gives them 95 yards, completing seven passes. A lot of success in the air. Again, a lot, a big cushion. Our corner on this side was easy, seven or eight yards away to the inside of that receiver. From midfield on first down and 10. Goodka throws it out in the right flat. It's tipped incomplete. Hirschfeld was playing the receiver Vihill, and Vihill tipped it. That could have been a dangerous pick. 
Dangerous for Weld Central and good for Brush. Second down and 10 to go. The Bay Diggers didn't have to defend the pass last week. They, that was the only negative in that game against Fort Morgan. They weren't tested from that standpoint. Down, right. Yeah. It's going to take all these. You know, again, we've said it for years. You have to, this is all preparation for the playoffs. Second down and 10 from midfield. Got about a 12-yard cushion with our corners. Two receivers put out each side. Goodka. Two-step drop, pumps, throws over the middle, and it's complete. A reception at the 38-yard line. Trent Mount makes the hit on Devante Fleming, who's got a touchdown catch in the game. It's a gain of 12, and another Rebel first down. They're looking to score before the break, trailing by 10, even though the board says 11. We'll see if they correct that because, come on, I mean, it's simple math in football. This isn't some theorem or theory that you've got to put together. They've completed 8 of 11 passes for 107 yards. Fleming's got 52 all by himself. First and 10 for Weld Central. The brush 38 out of the shotgun. Once again, it's Goodka. Five-step drop. Sets. Pressure coming backside. Rolls out of it. And then he's going to be taken down, maybe for a yard. Reed Hall from behind was able to make the hit. Oh, my gosh, he rolled to the 36. That's a terrible spot. That spot is atrocious. He rolled to the 36. He was down much closer to the 38. Second down and eight, a gain of two. The clock continues to run. A minute 18 to go before halftime. Goodko waits the snap. Rolls to his right. Still rolling. No pressure. Now comes the pressure. Throws underneath. Pass is caught. Short of a first down. To the 30. I think that's Reese. Alex Reese makes the catch. A gain of six. It'll be third down and two. Now we're inside of a minute to go. If the B-Diggers can make one defensive play, that would make all the difference. Third and two from the 30. Goodka rolling left. Still rolling. Now stopping. Throwing up the left side. Open and caught. And now the ball is fumbled. Now he dropped. It's rolled an incomplete pass. What a hit put on there by Matos Garcia. And Hirschfeld was right there. The receiver came down with the ball but didn't complete the process. And Rivera looked like he was tagged right there at the end, either him or Vigil. Again, it's so dark with their numbers, almost impossible to tell. Fourth down and two. And Maltos knocked him into next week, that's for sure. Solid hit right in his chest. Oh, that was a oh, that was a fourth down play. All right. My bad. I must have missed one there. The beat diggers have it at their own thirty. My correction there. 40 seconds to go before halftime. Dave, I still had that as a third down. I don't know where the fourth down came in. First and 10 at the 30 for the B Diggers. Let's see if they'll try to score before the break. Hand off to Aaron Williams. Bulls his way up the middle to the 35. Now he gets to the 36-yard line, a gain of six. The B Diggers do have a couple of timeouts to operate with. But they're going to get into the huddle. I think Coach Call is going to settle for this halftime lead. Yeah, I had Weld Central running seven plays on that drive. I had that as a... Yeah. Second down. And there's the handoff left side. A big hole for Shaver. Across the 40. Still on his feet. Breaking tackles to the 45. Now across the 45 to the 48. He carried defenders. Five seconds to go. It's a gain of 12. David, you and I, that was not a fourth down play. No, I saw that as third down as well. I mean, clearly. Clearly. Let's see, is Brush going to let the clock run out? Nope, they'll call a timeout. Brought to you by Greg Mona, State Farm Insurance. This is strange. The score is incorrect. And Weld Center, how did nobody see that? Because I'm writing down the plays as they happen. That was a third down and two, not a fourth and two. You know what? We're just going to take all the blessings we can get here, though. But you're right. I saw that as third down. Not sure the down marker guy earlier, remember, he had, he forgot to move forward when it was going to be first down, and then they went ahead and measured it, and we had the first down by over a yard. I'm not sure if he might have forgot to flip the switch over there, and then the sideline judge that's supposed to be keeping that, he might not be checking it. Well, now I'm, I wonder if I should say anything about the scoreboard, but I, I hate when the numbers are off. I know it. I mean, I, I will mention something. But the B-Diggers up 23-12 to on the scoreboard, but 22-12 to in our book. First and 10 at their own 48-yard line. We'll get to the halftime stats. And today in Beat Digger football history at the break, five seconds to go. 
I wonder if Mount's going to quarterback here, Dave, because he's got a pretty decent arm. He made a nice throw there to Maltos Garcia, that's for sure. But, you know, the big thing is the diggers have to be able to protect him long enough to, to throw the ball, and that's not something we've had good luck with. Remember last week at this time, Coach Call tried that halfback pass. Maybe he's going to have that in his uh, bag of tricks. Mount is the quarterback at the 47-and-a-half-yard line. This will be the final play unless a defensive penalty is committed in the opening half. Matos Garcia is in motion to the left. Mount back to throw. Heaves it up the left side. Matos Garcia is out there. And it's picked off, and I believe picked off out of bounds. And that is the end of the opening half. With a score, Brush 22, Weld Central 12 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran back with Dave Urich. We'll begin the third quarter momentarily in Keensburg. Where the Bee Diggers lead the Weld Central Rebels 22-12. to And Weld Central will receive the kickoff. And that's not a good thing, Dave, considering that it was an offensive-minded first half. Right. You know, we had a, we just couldn't stop them. But, you know, you got to believe the coaches went in and made some adjustments and helped reassure some of these young guys in the backfield that, you know, they can do the job and, and cover those receivers. But, you know, at the same time, you know, we've seen a lot of crazy things, you know, other teams have done over the years. And this is the time to prove yourself, Dave. You get a lot of underclassmen here on special teams. we got... Josh Chacon, Gunnar Guzman out there. Uh, you've also got uh, Colin Cole. I mean, right there. Those are three sophomores on his left side. Hunter Bostrom, a senior, right in the middle. And I think they're looking for an 11th player. And here comes Trent Mounts as well. Giovanni Garcia. Yeah, you've only got a couple seniors out there. B.J. Hirschfeld. Is one of them along with Bostrom. Yeah, this is where you prove yourself. Let's see how deep this kickoff goes for Peterson. Booms a low line drive. Field it at the 15. A fake handoff to the 20. That looks like V Hill across the 35 yard line. Has the sideline to the 50. Breaks out of a tackle inside the 45. <laughs> To the 42, it's a return of 43 yards before Colin Cole got down there to make the play. But, wow, that's a big special teams play for Weld Central as they trail by 10 to begin the second half. You don't always practice in special teams against those reverses and fake reverses. It seems like when teams run that, they always do really well. Well, Coach Call said it. Very difficult to simulate special teams. First and 10 from the beat digger, 42. Backs it and I. Goodka under center. There's the give and a big hole across the left side, back towards the middle. Across the 35 to the 34 for a gain of eight. And the ball carrier was, that is Rivera, Jaden Rivera. Dave, you weren't kidding. These are the darkest numbers there are. I yeah, mean, I've, I'll tell you what. These are my least favorite uniforms I've ever seen. Yeah, you can you can see the numbers, but I need a magnifying glass. Second down and two. Everything is dark on these uniforms. At the 34-yard line of brush. Simple handoff. It'll go to Rivera. Hit it behind the line of scrimmage, but breaks a tackle. He's across the 30 to the 28. That was the issue last week for the bead diggers. Poor tackling. And it happened right there. It's a gain of six. And it looked like in on the play was baby Matos Garcia, but that should have been a loss. It'll be first and ten for the Rebels. Yeah, Tristan Volk had him about three yards in the backfield. you got to give Rivera some credit as he was able to keep driving off that inside leg and pull away. First and ten for Weld Central. Two receivers out to the right at the 28-yard line of Brush. B Diggers coming on a blitz back to throw towards the sideline. Pass is complete inside the 10 to about the 9. Wide, wide open was the underneath receiver, Alex Reese, lined up out of the fullback position. And let's see what the pickup there. Pickup is 19 yards on the pass to Reese. First down. And goal from the nine. Man, that quickly. They're just moving it down the field. 
And let me tell you, the Bee Diggers are going to play better offenses later on in the season. And then we had movement along the Bee Digger defensive line. No doubt. That's going to be offsides. The ball will be at about the four and a half All yard line. Oh, it's going to be up to the B-Digger offense to win this game. Defense came up with one turnover, but now it's first and goal at the five. Gutka hands it off to Rivera, off right tackle. He drives towards the goal line, and he scores. Five yards away for Jaden Rivera. The B-Digger lead is down to four at 22 to 18. Now let's see what they do with the extra point. Well, they missed that first one. They'll attempt it. Sergio Gonzalez to attempt the extra point unless they run some sort of fake. Perfect snap. The kick is up, and that kick is inside the left upright. It's good. 10-18 to go. Third quarter, it is brushed 22, Weld Central 19 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 22 to 19 to score. Four plays, 42 yards in a minute, 38. Touchdown by Jaden Rivera from five yards out. Now the kickoff, it'll be a squib, and that ball is loose. One of the B-Diggers has to fall on it, and they do it about the 30-yard line to prevent the return. And falling on that football for Brush was Giovanni Garcia. Dave, at some point, if they don't stop this Brush offense, well, Central's going to have to do an onside kick or something different than just kick it off. Yeah, you know, our best bet right now is just to keep the ball you know, we got to keep running our offense the way we have been and eat that clock up. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers at the 31 yard line. Mount is the quarterback. Three in the backfield. And Trent Mount will hand it off up the right side. And that's a nice hole across the 35 to about the 38 yard line. And. Aaron Williams with the carry. Was it? I don't think that was Shaver, Dave. I think that was Aaron Williams. Yep, it was Williams. Yeah, it's just a big pile over there. We'll call it a gain of seven. Second down and three to go, just shy of the 38. Well, it's 37, second and three. You could bet at some point that Shaver will get the ball. This time it's the deep back, and that's a first down across the 40 to the 44. It's a gain of about six. Alex Reese and the that was baby Matos Garcia on the carry. Alex Reese made the hit. Hey, a big shout out to Pat and Cinda Walters listening to the game right now. I just got a text from them from the Dominican Republic. Wow. First and 10 from the 44 yard line of the B Diggers. Matos Garcia has got the football right up the middle, and he backs his way across the 50 to the 47. Close to 10 yards, they'll give him nine and a half. We'll say nine on the play. And Urker made the hit. Tell you what, Riggs, Tan, Tristan Volk. How about that Ray Miller, Labanos, Randy Woodward? Those guys doing a great job on that offensive line. Second down and one to go, just shy of the Wild Central 46-yard line. There's the gift to Matos, jitterbugging his way, trying to get out of the backfield. He cannot... And he's going to lose a couple of yards. Back to the 48. That'll set up a third and a long two to go for the Bee Diggers. Well, no, they gave him some forward progress. All right, not that bad at the 47. Now, instead of third and inches, it'll be third and one. Well, Central still in that 5-3. Blitz and Dalton Robertson in the middle. Handoff, Shaver, left side. And he cannot get out of the backfield. He's going to be thrown for a slight loss. Boy, three defenders in on the play, including Gurka and Caleb Street. 
That was one of those things where Clay just needs to know where that first down marker is, and not try to bounce it outside, just put his shoulder down and use that size to move the pile. Fourth down and about a short two. They got to get just inside the 46. They're just inside the 48. The Bee Diggers will go for it. Leading by three, 7.53 to go in the third. Mount under center. In motion to the left is Shaver. There's the give. Left side, first down. That is Aaron Williams who found a hole and was able to cross the 45 to the 42 and pick up about six yards in the play. So he brought Shaver in motion. He was the lead blocker as they ran that ISO here on the left side. But they sent Maltos in sort of a option look over to the right. And I think that threw the linebackers off a bit. At the 42-yard line, first and 10 for the B-Diggers as the drive continues. Neither team has punted in the game. Mount on the handoff to the front man, and that's maybe a yard. And that was Aaron Williams who got eaten up. Maybe for a gain of one. Tremendous penetration there. Well, I've got number 30, but he's not on my roster. Second down and nine to go for the B-Diggers. Yeah, this time not really running off tackle, more running right behind or maybe even inside the tackle a couple of plays in a row and, and uh, getting stumbled up and plugged up in there. From the 41-yard line, second and nine to go for Brush. Mounts with a long count. There's the pitch right to Matos Garcia to the 40. Swings it to the right side to the 35-yard line before he's taken down right in front of the beat digger's sideline. Good play of six yards, and it'll set up a third down and three to go. So the diggers run that sweep to the right behind that unbalanced line. and You know, they really had the Weld Central Rebels stretched out over there and got a really big block from Reed Hall over there on that side. And Maltos did a good job turning it up. Better quality, better service, better results. It's better electric. The home of Sterling Trailers, your big tech's headquarters, better electric. Third down and three to go for Brush of the Weld Central 35. 6.17 to go third quarter. It's Brush 22, Weld Central 19 as the Bee Diggers are looking over towards the bench for perhaps some play instructions. There's the give, the shave of the deep back. He skips over a defender, first down, still on his feet as he drives to about the 30. And it's a gain of five for Clay Shaver, the senior. 169 yards, 18 carries for Shaver. You're right, he jumped over the top. It's a little bit dangerous putting yourself in that position, but you know he's got the size where he can gamble. There's not too many defensive backs that are going to be able to come up and lay a whooping on him with, you know, with their size compared to his. First and 10 for Brush, just inside the Weld Central 30-yard line. The bead diggers have chewed up nearly five minutes, and they still have 30 yards to go to get into the land of no hash marks. There's to give the Shaver running left, and he is hit, and then breaks out of a tackle and tries to pinball his way to the 28-yard line. I'm telling you, that's a good two yards for Shaver, a hard two yards, because he took a lot of contact there along the right side of the defensive line. Second down and eight to go for the B-Diggers. 172 yards now for Shavers. We were unbalanced left that time. He tries to run behind Albarca and, and Reed Hall, but you know he kind of went up there and he hesitated. He was hoping a hole was going to open up, and, and it didn't. And then he was able to break that first tackle. This will be the 11th play of the drive, all on the ground for Brush. Second down and eight at the 28. Mount. Play action, rolling right, pressure coming, throws off his back foot, and the pass is going to be incomplete. He had to get rid of that, Dave. I think Shaver was the intended receiver, but there was so much pressure, he had no option but to throw the football. If not, it would have been a big loss via the sack. Right. There's a, That linebacker came on that blitz, and he was in Mount's face. And You know, Shaver, when he went in motion, he was trying to get to the sideline and then turn it upfield, and Mount had to throw it before he ever got turned up. You figure Welch Central's got to be keying on Shaver now. He's had success on virtually every carry. Yeah. Brush coming out in that unbalanced look again. and They've been doing that on every play. And that forces Welch Central to really overshift to our, to our side that has so many extra blockers. Third and eight at the 28. Handoff. Matos can see a right side. Breaks out of a tackle. First down to the 20. To the 15. Along the sideline. 10-5. Touchdown! Baby goes all the way. 28 yards for a score. And the B-Diggers have countered Weld Central's touchdown with one of their own. Brush 
28, Weld Central 19. So Brush goes unbalanced left. They come back and run it to the right. Like we said, oh, Weld Central had to shift over here. A lot of extra people because we have five blockers over here, especially when we're in that power eye formation, the extra running back over here. So we just run it the other way and take advantage of short personnel. The extra point to be attended by Peterson. There's a flag down. I think Weld Central moved. Yeah, they jumped off sides. And that means the Brush bead diggers could go for two here. I mean, they could have gone for two now, but you get that much closer. Well, last week, remember, they didn't blow the, the – that happened against Morgan. They didn't blow it until oh, after God, the, the, the kick had gone through the goalpost. Coach Call said, no, let's go ahead and kick it. And now he's going ahead and calling, calling them – or telling the players to go for two. Well, it's only logical. With the way the bee diggers have been running the football – so they will try to get to the 30-point mark right now. And we have some sort of stoppage here. I'm not sure. Well, I think Coach Call's asking him why we're, why the ball wasn't moved half the distance to the goal. Right. I mean, that would be the reason to go for two. The, it's got to be closer. You're right. It's not any closer. It's sitting at the two. It should be closer to the one. Yep. So Coach Call just sent his kicker back on again, I think. Nope. He's not out there. Oh, there you go. You're right, Dave. You are right. Ed. That's amazing, though, isn't it? When they jumped off sides, I wonder what the the reasoning for not going half the distance to the goal. I line. don't know. I mean, they didn't wave the flag. Peterson to attempt the extra point. Perfect snap. Kick is up, and that is a beauty. 4.29 to go in the third quarter. It's Brush 29, Weld Central 19 on your home of the defending state champions, 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Jaron Peterson to kick it off. A line drive headed for Rivera at about the 15. Runs to his right across the field and then pitches it left to Rodriguez, but the beat diggers are there to make the play at about the 22. Along the far left sideline, and that was outstanding. Nobody over pursued for Brush because that could have been a huge play since Weld Central on the previous Brush kickoff got into Beat Digger territory off a huge return. You know, last time they they did they just faked the reverse. That time they did complete the reverse, but it was a pretty open field pitch. I'm not sure it fooled too many of the diggers. But still, like you said, you gotta give them credit for not over overrunning that down the field. It's easy to do on those kickoffs. 12 plays, 69 yards, and 5 minutes and 48 seconds. Baby Matos Garcia scores from 28 yards out. 29 to 19. First and 10 for the 23 with one setback for Weld Central. Well, there's the fullback, Alex Reese, who gets the ball right up the gut across the 25 to the 26. In the middle for the beat diggers is Aaron Williams. He's one of the beat diggers making the hit along with Leo Libanos. It'll be second down and seven to go for the Rebels. Head Diggers did a good job closing in on it. Still in that 3-5, they have those three defensive linemen up there, usually a guy across from the, the center, and then our tackles out there um, changing their position, eagling down once in a while, and always blitzing at least one linebacker. The official spot is now the 25, second down and eight to go for Weld Central. Reese and Rivera in the backfield. Rivera has the pitch running right. Check that. That's another back in there across the 30, running hard to about the 33. And that time it was uh, Jake Urker. He's got eight yards and a first down for Weld Central. And the Bee Diggers obviously have significant defensive issues they're going to have to deal with during the week after this game is over. Yeah, just not, you know, not really wrapping up on those tackles. You know, we're making a lot of hits close to the line of scrimmage, but not doing a good job of holding on to them. And another thing, you see a lot of our guys getting blocked, not doing a good job of shedding those blocks and, and making themselves free enough to, to pursue. And I'm sure they worked on it this week. It'll just take some game experience to solve all that. Let's well, get up to game speed, you know. First and 10 for the 33. Backs in an eye. Good goes under center. There's the handoff on the left side and uh, virtually nothing. Maybe a couple of yards. And I think that was Urker again for a gain of two. Second down and eight. We've got three minutes to go. Third quarter. The Bee Diggers up by 10. Their second 10 point lead of the game. 29 to 19. 
Dicker's really doing a good job of zeroing in, though. You know, starting to run that defense and zeroing in to where the ball's going to be and having some good pursuit. Now we got to watch out for that pass again, giving him about a 10-yard cushion. Yeah, it's a huge cushion. Baxter and I again under center, second and eight, back to throw. And up the right sideline, the pass is going to be tipped and intercepted. What a play at the 41-yard line. And that is Ben Brown who tipped the ball to himself and was able to pick it off. An outstanding play by the sophomore. Second interception of the game by the B-Diggers as they take over with very good field position. And that started that little fade route. I thought Ben was beat. Kid had a lot of size on him, and I thought he was going to be in posi- or he was going to be too far away with the cushion that he gave him to to make the play. But did a good job of dialing in on where the ball was at and being athletic enough to land on the ground and tip it to himself and make the catch after he was already on the ground. First and ten for the B Diggers at their own forty-one yard line. Now they can take a three-score lead if they can score on this drive. On first down, there's the give on the counter to Matos Garcia across the right side, back towards the middle, and he squeezes his way across the 45 to about the 48. It's a gain of seven for baby Matos Garcia. The tackle was made by Kyle Jones, a senior defensive lineman. It's more of a bootleg look, wasn't it? After Mount handed the ball off, went ahead and showed bootleg over here to this side. That misdirection really caught the Weld Central Rebels off guard. Second down and three to go for the 48. Out this time, we'll give it to Shaver on the counter, running left. Breaks out of a tackle, he's got a first down. And there's going to be a late flag across the 50 to the 49. Oh, man, is this going to be a hold at the end of the play? Oh, it is. Oh, that is just senseless. I'm sure they didn't mean to do that, but, I mean, that was thrown so late. But that's yeah. why when you hold, you got to let go quickly so the officials don't catch you. <laughs> yeah, you know that, you're right. You know, the hold happened after Shaver had already made the cut, already had the first down, and our our end over here on this side ended up being, being at fault. Well, they are marking it for the line of scrimmage, so I guess maybe he just didn't throw the flag far enough initially. Well, that could change the drive a bit instead of a first down. Now it's second down and 13 from their own 38-yard line. A minute 54 to go in the third. The B-Diggers lead the Rebels 29 to 19. And Shaver has broken off some big plays. We saw Baby with a 28-yard touchdown run as well. Man in motion to the right. That's Matos Garcia. The pitch right to Williams. Looks for a seam on the outside. And Williams dives and gets to about uh, maybe the original line of scrimmage of the 41. Picks up three yards. Third down and 10 to go for the B-Diggers. And this is not four-down territory unless they get closer to midfield after this play. Williams ran out there real patiently like he was waiting for a hole to open up and just never really it never really materialized for him. He's got the kind of speed if he can get out there quick enough, he can turn it upfield and run away from people. Bee diggers might have to take a timeout. They're taking a lot of time in that huddle. They gotta snap this very quickly. Play clock is inside of five seconds on third down. And I believe had Coach Reed call call the timeout. He had to do it. Brought to you by Greg Mona, State Farm Insurance, Home Auto Life and Health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family, 842-4555. Mounts got up to the line of scrimmage, but there was no way he's going to get the playoff unless he was going to go with a quick count. So that's a smart timeout. you got to call that in that situation. And running out of that, that double tight formation with the unbalanced on one side. Coach Calls typically had Maltos Garcia going in motion, so I imagine he was hoping he was going to get that motion going as well. And just a good heads-up call by their by their head coach to prevent that penalty. So when the game resumes, it'll be third and ten at the 41. We've gone for it on fourth down here before. Yeah, they just got they got to pick up about I would say anywhere from five to seven yards to go for it on fourth. If it's a fourth and ten. I think they'll punt, but fourth and three, fourth and four with a 10-point lead. They haven't punted all game long. They haven't stopped all game long. I think you go for it in that situation. So here we go, third down and 10 with 49 seconds to go in the third. 
And the Bee Diggers have the ball at their own. Well, Central doesn't have enough 41. guys on the field either. Man in motion, Matos Garcia back to throw up the middle. Pass is incomplete, intended for Hall. Looked like a pretty decent throw, a little bit behind him maybe. At the 50-yard line, now the Bee Diggers will have to punt on 4th and 10. Now that did surprise me a bit, Dave. I thought they would run the ball. You know, that was a that was just a dump, you know, that fake and then a tight end dump, and he was wide open. Well, the, the linebacker had coverage, but Maltos hit him right on the numbers. I think it just was thrown a little bit before Hall was ready. Bee Diggers to punt, and uh-oh, the ball is blocked. It was a... Slow getting it off was Abarca, and the ball is loose, and Weld Central's going to have it either way. A miscue on special teams. They've got it at the Bee Digger 37-yard line. As it took a while to get that kickoff, and it was blocked. Yeah, there's no way he should have attempted that because before he even took his first step to try to punt it, the Weld Central Rebels were within three yards of the ball. They almost tackled him before he punted it. Well, 37 seconds to go in the third. The Bee Diggers have a 10-point lead, but it's first and 10 for Weld Central to brush 37. The game can change pretty quickly. Trips to the right. The Bee Diggers don't have enough defenders out there. They, there's the handoff on the right side. Urker with the football. Gets it around a Bee Digger, but baby Maltos Garcia is there to make the play at the 36-yard line. It'll be a gain of about one. And, uh uh-oh, we got a bee digger down. That would have been the final play of the quarter. Might be a cramp, though. Yeah, they're just stretching out his calf. Maltos Garcia, when he made that tackle, he he was in on a double leg. He he about drove his shoulder through him like like, uh, Hakeem Tlaib or maybe Nick Beltran. Well... (laughs) <laughs> it'll be second down in a in a short nine that boy that's a that cramp you can tell hurts is that baby out there did he uh because i'm looking for baby in the secondary yeah, i'm thinking he's the one i think Matos Garcia is the one who's flat on his back yeah he's still in pain in significant pain they'll give him a gain of two incidentally instead of one yep they're just stretching it out just they're just trying to massage it and stretch it out well, on a warm night, these don't happen in the latter months. Man, he's squirming out there. He is squirming. That must be. Every time they release it, you can tell he's just about ready to stand up and go again and must make his toes curl under. It'll be second down and eight to go from the 36. 20 seconds to go in the third. Man, that is a bad, bad cramp, you can tell. Yeah, he's having now he's gonna run off the field. Finally loosened it up. Second down. Now the B diggers are a little bit short handed without an experienced player there. Second and eight. Second and eight from the thirty six. The clock should restart. And it does. Could be the final play of the third quarter. And now the clock is not rolling. they got to roll that clock. There it is. There's the handoff on the left side. Uh, check that up the middle. I misread the play completely. It was right up the gut. Brought down by and I think that might have been the quarterback, Goodka, for a gain of about three. And that's the end of the quarter. To the 32-yard line with the score. Brush 29, Weld Central 19, a one-minute break. On 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. We start the fourth quarter. The Bee Diggers up by 10. Weld Central has a third and four at the brush. 32-yard line. Good gun, a shotgun. Play action. Throws it out in the right flat. The pass is caught underneath. A first down along the sideline to about the 26. And that is caught by, looks like, Rivera. Gain of six. Yeah, not only are they wearing dark uniforms, the, the lights are so dim out here. So if we sound like we're lost on who's got the ball. That's probably why. First and ten for the Rebels of the B-Digger 26-yard line. 
This game will get a lot more interesting if Weld Central can score. Again in a shotgun, man in motion. And there's the give on the left side. And a Randy Woodward tackle is going to throw the ball carrier, Zach Fulmer, for a loss at the 28. One of the better defensive plays by the B Diggers. It'll be second down and 12. Probably one of the better defensive plays by the Diggers this year. Without a doubt. Woodward, he jumped up. He was given the no way sign with his hands as he celebrated that tackle. Second down and 12 to go for the 28. Again, Goodka's in a shotgun. Two receivers put to the left and right. Five-step drop. Throws it up the right side. Man is out there. It's incomplete, though. It's behind the intended receiver. It'll be third down and 12. That was intended for Isaiah Vigil. Hunter Bostrom had some good coverage over there. He was right there step for step with them. Third and 12 from the 28. You know that if Weld Central does not convert here, they're going to go for it. Again, Goodka out of the gun. And the bead diggers moved, and you got to watch the ball, not listen to the count. Now it's a much more manageable situation, but the bead diggers are pointing towards Weld Central. But I believe this penalty is going to go against Brush. Now the officials are conferring. Still talking about it. Well, no decision has been made yet. It will be offsides against Brush. But again, you know, one of those situations where, you know, the, they might have had the motion on Weld Central side, but because of the way our kids reacted, they chastised themselves, and that kind of gives the officials the okay to <laughs> hand the penalty to us. Third down and seven from the 23 of the bead diggers. Gurka again in the shotgun. Awaits the snap. Has the football. Will hand it off up the left side for a gain of about three or four to the first back through. And that appears to be Rivera. And it is. Tackled at the 20. Gain of three. It'll be fourth down. It'll be fourth down and about four to go for Weld Central. This could be a, a game-defining play right now because if the Beat Diggers hold it with a 10-point lead, the way they're running their offense, they'll be able to win this thing. Fourth and four from the 20. Goodka in a shotgun. Has the football, looks to his left, throws over the middle, incomplete! Off the left hand of Gary Rodriguez at the 11. It was thrown behind him. And the Beat Diggers take over on downs, but Rodriguez was certainly open. Yep, he sure was. And Goodka just threw that ball too hard. Tried too hard to, to thread it to him and consequently threw it behind him. The Diggers had a blitz on there too. And I have a feeling he felt the pressure coming from one of our linebackers up the middle. Well, let's see if they can put together a typical brush Beat Digger drive. A good five to six minute 80 yard drive although they do have big play capabilities first and 10 from the 20 holding a 29 to 19 lead with 10 15 to go in the game Trent's mount will hand it off to the up back Aaron Williams and he is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage driven back by three defenders second down and 10 the block was simply missed there unless Aaron missed the hole but there were a couple Rebels through right there to meet him. There was no way he was going to get away from that. Yeah, I think the play was designed to run left, but there wasn't much of a hole there, and Aaron tried to make some, something out of it by drifting over here to the right. And nobody there to block for him. Kyle Jones made the initial hit for the Rebels, second down and 10 for Brush at their own 20-yard line. Williams, Matos, Garcia, and Shaver are in the backfield. Handoff to Shaver, running left. Trying to not get around a defender, and then he breaks out of a tackle, but he might have lunged for a yard, maybe two. And now the, the Rebels responded on Brush's last possession. They're doing it once again. Well, with our punt game, this last play, this makes me a little bit nervous if we don't pick up a fourth down or a third down conversion here. Gain of two, and Shaver's been held in check in the second half. Of course, the B Diggers haven't had many opportunities either. Third down and eight to go from their own 22. Inside of nine minutes to go. Still plenty of time. 
The Bee Diggers don't have this thing won yet. Trent Mount again under center. Weld Central's coming on a blitz on third and eight. There's the bootleg, and Mount throws on the run. Pass is incomplete. Williams was open a little bit, but again being pressured as Williams was at the 33-yard line, but the ball was thrown behind him. Now the Bee Diggers will have to punt again. So the Rebels did their job defensively. Thank goodness the Bee Diggers have a two-score lead. Line's going to have to do a lot better job this time at keeping those Rebels from rushing our punter. Aaron Williams is back to punt this time. Williams standing at his own nine. There was movement there by Weld Central. No flag. He gets it off high and very short. Extremely short. Now it takes a heck of a beat digger roll across the 50, inside the 45 to the 43. Wow. That turned into a 35-yard punt when it should have gone for about 15 or 20. Yeah, we got about a 15 or 20-yard roll there. It was a blessing for us because there was a lot of pressure there on on Williams again. Uh, we were lucky. He was actually lucky to get that off. First and 10 for the Rebels at their own 43-yard line. You need your vehicle and farm equipment to be in top shape. So make sure you take care of them by purchasing the best quality parts at great prices at your local Napa store, Central Auto Parts in Fort Morgan. At the 43-yard line. Yeah, they throw a lot of passes here in this game. Gutka looks like he's going to do it again. And it's a high snap. The ball is loose. And Gutka falls on it back at the 31. That's the first errant snap by Wells Central. And that results in a 12-yard loss. Second down and 22. Yeah, that was just what the doctor ordered. Wells Central's had a lot of great shotgun snaps tonight, but that was about three feet over his head. Reed Hall is out. I believe a sophomore is in there. Sebastian Medina, if I'm reading the number right. Second down, Sebastian Medina from the 31 in a shotgun. Gutka throws it out in the right flat. The pass is caught underneath, but maybe gaining a couple of yards to the 33. Could be Urker. Let's see who it is. No, it's Fulmer. Fulmer makes the catch, but again, only two yards in the play. Third down and 20 to go for Weld Central. Brush, 29, Weld Central, 19. We have 7.25 to go in the game, and the Rebels take a timeout. We'll take it with them. With the score, the Beat Diggers 29, the Rebels 19 on your home of the defending state champions, 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. A couple of big plays coming up for Weld Central. Third and 20 at their own 33-yard line. Trips to the right, two receivers to the left. Five receivers in on this formation. Goodka, back to throw. Pumps, rolls out of pressure, rolls to his right along the sideline, and his pass is caught! First down! across. No, it was a drop. Was it dropped in the last second? The B-Diggers are saying that there was contact at the 46. I think one official said incomplete. The other said it was a catch. And it was, let's see. Oh, they're going to say it's a catch. Yep. Holy Mahungus. The pass is apparently caught right at the stick. Devante Fleming with a catch. Now they're going to mark it where it was caught just short of the first down. Now it's an official's timeout. It'll be fourth and short. Yeah, it's fourth and inches. Give them 19, Dave, on the pass. The diggers have got to get better. This should be a quarterback sneak. I mean, he's got maybe six inches at the just past the 47 yard line. And that's a that's a play that keeps Weld Central in the game unless they mess up this particular play. With the Bee Diggers up by 10, still plenty of time to go in the game. Six minutes and 57 seconds to go. Fort Morgan Mustangs will be here in a few weeks on B106 and B106.com. But right now on 10-10, the Bee Diggers, who trailed at one point in this game by only a 12-7 count, have led throughout. 
And apparently the clock is being reset to 7 minutes and 17 seconds. The officials are on the verge of just losing kind of some control of this game as they're trying to justify the call that they made over there. Yeah, I thought it was a catch. I didn't think it was an incomplete pass. I mean, the ball apparently was fumbled out of bounds, but that's what I saw. He came down with the ball, made a move out of the shotgun. And this will be a run to the right, back towards the middle, breaking a tackle. It's going to be very close. We might have a hold in there. That's going to be a first down, looks like, for V Hill, but there is a flag down. I think that might be a hold. Dave, i got to tell you, that is a ridiculously dumb call. You've got fourth and inches. You can't do a quarterback sneak there? You, know, you have a guy in a shotgun? Well, he did out of shotgun. That's what's crazy about it. Let's see who this penalty is against. There's not been a preliminary indication. Whitecaps pointing towards World Central. Yeah, that's a huge coaching error. I'm sorry. Because if that's just a quarterback sneak, there's no, there's not going to be a hold on the play. No, but no. when a play has to develop, that increases the chances of a penalty. I am shocked that they ran that play out of the shotgun on fourth and inches. I mean, what, maybe six inches? Yeah, I agree. Crazy call. But the diggers are going to be able to get the consequences of it in our favor. And Weld Central has got to go for it still, I would think. Because if they don't score here. we got to stop down that pass. You know, they've been working on us, on our defense on that side all night. We just haven't really been able to stop it. And you can bet they're going to come back and go that direction again. And the penalty was beyond the first down marker, which is even worse. So it's yeah. not a fourth and ten with some inches. It's a fourth and nine. And they will go for it. That's a huge penalty at their own 44. They've got to get to the B-Digger 47. Goodkin a shotgun. Rolls to his right, looking, throwing on the run along the sideline. Intercepted at the 39. Across the field to the 50. Back to the middle at the 45-yard line. Picked off the third interception of the game. And there is a late flag. Trent Mount picked it off for the B-Diggers. We've had Matos Garcia, Ben Brown, and then Trent Mount. The return goes for 16 yards, and this might be a personal foul against Weld Central, but one official has his foot pointed in Brush's direction. Still waiting for the indication. No, they're going to walk it off against the Rebels. You're right, Dave. Let's see. Unsportsmanlike. Get ball. Unsportsmanlike oh, it's against Brush. Okay. The official was pointing one way, then the other way. Not the the lead official, but the one who walks it off. So that's against the bead diggers. Yeah, our officiating crews really, they're uh, suffering from some confusion. Yeah, they're not communicating well. Th- that's no. not a good marriage out there. 6.49 to go in the game. The B-Diggers lead 29-19. to 19, And they've got the ball at their own 40-yard line. Serving area bean growers since 1921. Trinidad Benham, 5-2-2-35-95 for all your dry bean needs. They're proud supporters of Northeastern Colorado sports. First and 10 at the 40. Let's see if the B-Diggers can get into the end zone one more time. Hand off to the D-back Shaver. Up the middle to the 45. Into the secondary across the 50 to the 45. That's 15 yards. And a first down for Clay Shaver, the senior, for the B-Diggers. 189 yards now for Clay. 21 carries. Well, Central in that 5-3 defense had all three of their linebackers walked up within a couple yards of the line of scrimmage. And they sent one of them, and Shaver just ran right past him. Shaver had about, what, 160-some-odd at halftime. Now Trent Mount is letting the play clock run down. We're under six and a half minutes to go in the game. First and ten for the 45. Brush leads by ten. Shaver with a long, long count. Hands it off to Williams. Or check that. That's Matos Garcia. And he bulls his way inside the 40 to the 37. It's a gain of eight. 
before that, the Rebels made contact there. Go ahead. That takes him to 93 yards on 15 carries. Digger's really chewing it up on the ground tonight. Staying in that double tight with the uh, unbalanced occasionally, but mostly just running right after Weld Central. Dalton Robertson made the hit second down. And two to go from the 37. Yeah, one more touchdown for good measure. Shaver, Williams, and Baby are in the backfield. Again, he's just waiting for the play clock to get to five seconds. Now it's at four, at three, at two, at one. The snap is off. Hand off to the deep back. That's a first down. And still rolling is none other than Aaron Williams, I believe. And it is. Check that. No, that's Matos Garcia again. Uh, they, they both got bands on their arms. So anyways, across the 30 to the 29, the gain of eight. I should be able to tell a little bit better. That puts him over the century mark with 101 yards. Like you said, you know, he took that hit. He just kept running. He just kept veering towards the sideline. Wouldn't go down. First and 10 at the 29. Approaching the five-minute mark. The B-Diggers with a 10-point lead. Shavers the deep back in front of him are Williams and Maltos Garcia. Now the play clock's at three. He doesn't even see it. He's got to get it off. There, he does get it off. There's the pitch left to Shaver. Back to the middle to the 20. And Shaver is down. There's a fumble at the end of the play. And let's see the B-Diggers pounced on it. Brush has not committed a turnover yet this season. And Brush got the ball. Wow. All right, so he... Or check that. There was the interception throw by Mount. They haven't fumbled yet this year. And let's see where the ball is. Uh, Woodward with a recovery for Brush. Woodward recovers the fumble. It's going to be a gain, I, I believe, of 10. Are they going to measure for this? Or? It's right at the stick. Now yeah, we'll give Shaver 10 yards. If they're going to measure, it's, I mean, it's right, right at the stick. Shaver does such a good job of fighting for every extra yard he can get, and he doesn't go down, but in the process, he's got to remember to cover that ball when a bunch of guys start piling on. He's a yard shy of 200 unofficially. The B-Diggers have run for well over 300 yards tonight. It's a first down for the Bead Diggers at the 19 yard line of the Rebels. Brush 29, Wild Central 19. 446 to go in the game. This drive started at their own 40 after an interception by Trent Mount, who is now the quarterback. He's been the quarterback this entire drive. Matos Garcia is in motion to the left. It's Williams right up the middle, and he carries a defender for about a yard, maybe two. Man, he has swarmed under by four Rebels, including, I think it's Zarian Irvin, who's only a freshman. Nonetheless, the gain is to the 17. Second down and eight to go. Clock continues to roll. Boy, Mount squeezes every second out of every play, doesn't he? He's got to. Yeah, that's smart. He's a junior. He's got some experience from last year coming in in one-sided situations. Second down and eight from the 17. Same three men in the backfield. There's the give to the deep back. Shaver cuts it back to the left of the 15, and then he bulls his way as he's driven back. Inside the 15 to the 14. It's a gain of three for Williams. And Robertson and Reese make the hit. And a timeout called by the Rebels with under four minutes to go. And the B-Diggers up by 10. I think Walt Central's down to a timeout. And they don't list the timeouts here. No, they've, yeah, they only have one timeout. They do list them, actually which is rare. A lot of stadiums don't have them at this level. So the B-Diggers will be faced with a third down situation. Looking to find insurance for your car, home, or even for you? Calling Meyer Phillips Insurance with two locations, 
in Brush and Fort Morgan. They can help you with your home, car, health, or life insurance questions or provide a quote at Singmeyer Phillips Insurance. And roaming are jewelry and gifts, the leader in Northeast Colorado for diamonds, jewelry, watches, and expert in-store jewelry repairs for service, quality, and value. Shop Roamingers in downtown Sterling. And, of course, Willow Coffee, Tea and Smoothies, and G-Suites Bakery. Try a new breakfast bowl or delicious breakfast burrito with your Willow Coffee or Tea. Open 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, Saturday 7 until 4, 921 Edison Street in Brush. Third and five to go for Brush at the Weld Central 14-yard line. Officially 332 to go in the game. Mount will turn, and there's a flag. Illegal procedure against the Bee Diggers. Illegal procedure is a call against Brush. It's frustrating, you know, after that timeout to have that happen. But still third down, just have to change the play. I mean, the Bee Diggers put the game away with a touchdown here. No doubt about it, by three scores if they can get in. If they don't, Weld Central still has a glimmer of hope. Well, with the way they throw the ball, you know, they can get down the field. Diggers need this touchdown. Now it's third and ten at the 19-yard line. And they're winding the clock, and the Rebel coaches don't like that at all. And wow, wow, those Rebel coaches are yelling. And, yeah, there's no doubt that the, the clock should not be winding. It should be 3.32 to go, and it's been a rough night for the officials, Dave. There's no doubt yeah, about it. I feel bad for them. You know, they're they're definitely early in the season and trying to figure out the rules. Well, I think they know the rules. I think they just forgot that it was coming out of a timeout. I would hope that they know that 19 seconds elapsed. they got to put that at 3.32 is what I had. Yeah, it looks like they got those seconds back up there already. It says 3.33. They gave him an extra second. No big deal. Yeah, and it was earlier in the game, and I can hear a coach yelling about that, where <laughs> Walt Central was given three downs instead of four. And then the scoreboard was wrong as well up here. It was 23-12 to 12 at one point when clearly it was 22-12. to 12. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, white cap still over there trying to explain to Coach Call what happened, and, and if I was in his shoes, I'd I'd be saying the same thing. You you're the one that wound it. Well, but the right thing to do is obviously to put the time back on the clock. Now that ball's like at the 18 instead of the 19. It's like they moved the ball a few inches forward. Yeah. Well, we'll call it at the 18. Third down and a long nine. Mount hands it off on the right side to Matos Garcia. Slips out of a tackle. Up the right side to the 10. Matos Garcia to the 5. Goes for the pylon. And I believe he's going to be just short of the end zone. It's a first and goal for the Bead Diggers. And a gain of 16 yards for Baby. Puts him in 117 yards now. 17 carries. Just a great night. And that was meant to be off tackle. But he bounced it around to the outside where he saw that open space. And just showed his speed being able to run away from the defenders. First and goal at the two. This will punctuate a very good night for the offense. Ball at the Rebel two-yard line. Will Shaver get it this time? He's had a humongous night. There's the handoff to Shaver off left tackle, and he bowls his way into the end zone for a touchdown for Clay Shaver. That's his third touchdown of the game. And the Bee Diggers now lead 35-19. to 19, And Shaver's over 200, Dave. Yep, 202 yards on 23 carries. Just a great night for him, but not only that, the whole offense. Williams has got 49 yards on 11 carries. Maltos Garcia, 117, like we said before, on 17. So Diggers really chewing it up on the ground. The line drive extra point is good. 3.23 to go. In the game, Brush 36. Weld Central 19 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 
Seven plays, 60 yards in three minutes and 26 seconds. Clay Shaver scores for the third time in the game from two yards out this time. B-Diggers lead 36-19. Peterson boots it towards the sideline. Let's see if it rolls out of bounds. It does at about the nine. Well, Central will have the ball at their own 35-yard line to begin the drive, and they have one timeout remaining with 3.23 to go, Dave. Yeah, you hate to see that ball go out of bounds right there, but at the same time, you know, anytime we have a chance to prevent a bigger run back or at least control the situation, we'll take it. Yep. You think the pass defense is going to be tested now? <laughs> oh, I believe, I believe so. And I see we're changing our corner sides. Going to see if we can't trip them up with their Attack to our defensive left side. Lining up on the left hash mark, first and ten. Again, two receivers split out each way. They've done that throughout the course of the game. Brian Goodka, the quarterback, in a shotgun. Awaits the snap. Rolls to his right. Sets. Pressure coming. Re-rolls to his right after he stops. Takes off with a football. Randy Woodward sandwiches him back at about the 30-yard line. A sack. Of the Weld Central quarterback, he's thrown down for a loss of about five. Second down and 15 to go. Paid off switching our corners, didn't it? Maltos Garcia took over over there and just had some really good coverage. And good could want to throw the ball several times. Just couldn't do it because of the coverage. Oh, the B-Diggers have personnel issues. They had to call a timeout. They had to call a timeout. That was a mess out there. Giovanni Garcia was coming in. Maltos Garcia was going out. Then Giovanni ran off the field. And the Bee Diggers call their second timeout. Brought to you by Greg Mauna State Farm Insurance, Home Auto Life and Health. 842 4555. Greg Mullen will work with you to get the insurance coverage you need. Okay, all right. We're in good shape now. We've got 11 guys on the field again. Well, and when you're young, the rotations sometimes get more complicated. Absolutely. And when you're, you know, and then the coaches are trying to figure out you know, which young guys are ready to step up into these situations. So they have to make adjustments on the fly. And then when that happens, that causes a little bit of confusion too. But, you know, these are all learning experiences for everybody down there trying to figure out who needs to be where and who's going to be the best player in certain situations. Dave and I will leave after this game to Glenwood because this game's taken almost two and a half hours. Hopefully next week won't be the case. Wow. We roll through that game quicker, yeah. Well, when you have a lot of passing... Yeah, from one even from one side because the bee diggers have thrown a limited number. Well, remember, Glenwood doesn't have that tall quarterback anymore either, so they hopefully they won't be throwing the ball like they like. Right, to. Dante Sparacco's now at Cherry Creek, second and fifteen from the thirty. Again in a shotgun, rolling left is Gutka, setting, throwing deep up the left side. It is intercepted off the deflection. No, Matos Garcia was out of bounds. Man, I thought he had one foot in at the forty-one yard line. As the ball was intended over there for Gary Rodriguez. Man, they have so much height on the bee diggers. That's why they can throw the ball with some success. He caught that like a professional receiver. Did you see him? He looked down. He checked to see if his toes were inbound. I thought it was a catch. Was ju- I, thought, I think he juggled yeah, it. I it think that's have, why they yeah. didn't, didn't give it to him. But he did catch it. Just juggled it. Third down and 15. The bee diggers have three picks on the night. Well, Central has one. No fumble recoveries in the game. Still have 2.40 to go. The bee diggers can make a couple of plays and they can just take a two or three knees to run out the clock. On third down and 15 from the 30. Again, Gutka, three-step drop, rolls right, sets, takes off of the football, throws in the run, passes complete underneath, but out of bounds at about the 40-yard line, shy of the first down. And that looks like... V Hill. Yeah, that's going to be called back. Davis spotted the flag along the sideline, which appears to be against Weld Central. Hard to see the hold from here if that was the case. Here's the other thing, Dave. It takes forever for an official to give us an indication what the penalty was. Yeah. He... Oh, oh, personal wow. foul against Brush. Wow. Personal foul. Well, must have been a late hit on the quarterback. That's the only thing it could have been. Seven-yard gain there on the pass to Fleming, and then 15 yards. So Weld Central has it at the brush, 48-yard line. 
First and 10. 2.34 to go. And this is one of the longer football games. Thank God the weather is perfect. At the 48-yard line, the Rebels run up to the line of scrimmage. The outside receiver to the left is Rodriguez. He's got a touchdown catch tonight. We'll recap all the scoring coming up during the post-game show. The B-Diggers have held the Rebels to only seven points in the second half. Trying to keep it that way, but Weld Central's in brush territory. On first down, Goodka. Rolls to his left. Pressure coming backside. He works out of it. Now working along the sideline. Throws an incomplete. Boy, that was outstanding pressure by Randy Woodward. It'll be second down and 10 to go for Weld Central. How many passes have they thrown? About 30? 22 passes. Yeah, gosh, They've can't... completed 14 of them, so wow, not too shabby. Yeah, it seems closer to 30 to me. That's a lot. Second down and 10. We still have two minutes and 28 seconds to go. That's why the only way this clock's going to stop is if the B-Diggers get an A stop. B&J Plumbing can handle all your plumbing needs from clogged drains to a major construction project. 5-2-2-38-28. Second down and 10 to go for the Rebels of the B-Digger 48-yard line. Four yards behind the center in a shotgun is Goodka. Rolling right, setting up a screen to the left. Wide open is Rivera. Has it at the 45. Then he's hit right there. What a play by Shaver. It's only a gain of three. That could have been a lot more, but Rivera decided to cut it inside instead of take it towards the sideline. Yep, I'll tell you what. Hunter Bostrom did a good job playing that strong safety sort of position over here as he, he softened up, stood in his in his uh, hook zone over here, and he was able to turn that play back inside. Third and seven from the 45. Goodka rolling left. Here comes Woodward along the sideline incomplete behind Rodriguez. Randy Woodward's got to be the best pass rusher the B-Diggers have. He's, oh, he's done it tonight. Yeah, he's excited. You see when he plays, he just plays with so much excitement. And... It'll be fourth down. And Weld Central will go for it. They have got to get to the brush. 38-yard line. More than likely will be past, what, number 24. Yep. Good. Well, this will be past 25, actually. Oh, okay. This is a long fourth quarter. The V-Diggers have this game in hand. With a minute 56 to go, up by 17, 36 to 19. On fourth and seven, good cup. Back to throw, up the middle, tipped and nearly intercepted. I think there's a flag thrown into the line of scrimmage. There is a flag in the middle. And a bead digger is down. It's incomplete. And getting up slowly is Lipanos. Hold Weld Central. Declined. Bead digger football. And they did a great job there. I'm not sure who deflected the ball at about the 40. I was actually Shaver. Yeah. What hasn't he done? Yeah. You know, he's a big rangy kid. We saw him the last couple of years. You know, he was the guy that out of these seniors that got the a lot of the playing time defensively that was the guy and so he's been out there in those clutch situations with a minute 51 to go B digger still might elect to run the ball Walt Central's well the scoreboard shows one timeout I thought they were out of timeouts well if that's the case they will run the ball now Rebel late getting off the field first and 10 at their own 45 A little bit of a revamped backfield. I think Shaver has been taken out there to give him some rest. He's had a heck of a game. From the 45, there's a handoff to Williams off left tackle. He's corralled at the 47, picking up two yards. Dave, how much better do the beat diggers and the coaching staff feel this week as opposed to a week ago and, of course, the players? You know, the the thing is, is, you know, last week after they, as they were getting to know each other, like we said tonight, how much better they're going to get as they get to know, you know, what their best talents are and how they can put those things together. You know, the end of the game was when Shaver ran for that touchdown last week. That was out of a power eye. Here they are tonight just having all kinds of, you know, running success, just running power football. Well, and I think the thing is, is that you didn't just have to win this game. I think you had to win it somewhat convincingly because if you – 
face a Weld Central team and you barely beat them, a team that hasn't made the playoffs in a long time, even though the Beat Diggers graduated, what, 17 or 16 of 22 starters, you still would have had doubts, but you come out here, the defense was bending but not breaking, and now you're up by two and a half scores. That's good. But, you know, they're going to be tested next week defensively oh, yes. with the pass. Because yeah. Rusty Whitcomb, we watched him in the state championship game against Fort Morgan with that street house kid. They still like to roll out and throw yeah. those waggle passes. Yeah, Dakota Stonehouse. Remember him? Stonehouse, he was yeah. really good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, was he good. That was in 2008. Yeah, they like to throw those passes in the flats. So we're going to have to really work on that this week. Second down and eight from the 47. Well, Central's coming on a blitz. They know it's going to be a handoff. They think it's going to be a handoff. And it is going to be a handoff. Running left side is Hirschfeld across the 50. And he dives to the 49 for a gain of four. Third down and six to go. Jaden Rivera was one of the Rebels in on the hit. That's a third down play coming up with a minute 15 to go in the game. I think the B diggers can run out the clock anyway. I agree. I don't. They could take a knee, and I think there wouldn't be an issue. There's an equipment issue with ah. Weld Central. Yeah, part of a face mask was coming off, and the player had to come off the field. Well, another big pat on the back for Riggs Tan, Tristan Volk, Ray Miller, Randy Woodward, Leo Lobanos. Those guys have had a an amazing night tonight on that offensive line. Third down. No doubt. Outstanding play. Under a minute to go, third down. And four to go from the 49-yard line of Weld Central. Play clock is still at about eight seconds here. Now it's at five, at four. Mounts with a long count. And he's taking it down to the millisecond. Hand off right side, and that is Hirschfeld. And he's close to a first down. Man, he was bowling his way to the 45 as Hill made the hit. Close to a first down. And I think he's short by maybe a fraction. Fourth down, but that's it. The B-Diggers don't have to snap the ball. With 12 seconds to go, the Brush B-Diggers have won tonight in Keensburg, defeating the Weld Central Rebels 36-19. We'll take a break and come back with a recap on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The Beat Digger Post Game Show is brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center with three locations to serve you better. Sterling Brush in Fort Morgan, your headquarters for all your home, farm, and ranch supplies from plumbing to feed. That is Mr. D's Ace Home Center. The Brush Beat Diggers defeat the Weld Central Rebels tonight, 36-19. In Keensburg, the B-Diggers got on the board on their opening drive. 11 plays, 65 yards in 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Baby Matos Garcia scores from 3 yards out. The PAT was good. It was 7-0. Weld Central came back. 6 plays, 68 yards in 2.54. An 11-yard pass from Brian Goodka to Devante Fleming. Extra point was no good. It was 7-6. Following a Goodka interception, the Rebels took the lead. 11 plays, 49 yards in 441. It was Gary Rodriguez with an eight-yard touchdown catch. Two-point conversion was missed. It was 12-7 to early in the second quarter. But back came Brush, 11 play, 68 yards in just over five minutes. Clay Shaver with a five-yard run and a two-point conversion run, making it 15-12. to After Baby Matos Garcia intercepted a pass, one of three INTs by the Beat Diggers tonight. Brush came back, six plays, 80 yards later in a minute, 54. And Shaver scored from 10 yards out. He had runs on that drive of 15, 28, 21, 7, and 10. And it was 22-12 to at the break. Then the Beat Diggers saw Weld Central come out very solid early in the third. J- Jaden Rivera with a five-yard run. The PAT was good. It was 22-19, to set off by a big kickoff return. So that was a 42-yard drive in just 98 seconds. But as the Beat Diggers have done historically, they responded to that touchdown with one of their own on a 12-play, 69-yard march down the field. In 5 minutes and 48 seconds, Matos Garcia scored for the second time in the game. 28 yards out, it was 29-19. to And then to cap off the scoring in the fourth quarter, Shaver from 2 yards out, completing a 7-play, 60-yard drive in 3 minutes and 26 seconds. And that would be at 36-19 as the Beat Diggers even their record at 1-1, one one, Weld Central falls to 0-2. And, and speaking of those Rebels, Dave, 
They were in love with the passing game tonight. They had to do it down the stretch, trailing throughout the game. Yeah, they ended up throwing the ball 25 times. They completed 15 of those, three interceptions. But 169 yards passing, they threw to about five different receivers. I'll tell you what, good has got a good arm. They have a decent passing attack. As far as running the ball, they only ran for 66 yards. Rivera was their leading rusher. He only had 36 yards on eight carries. But like I said, 66 yards overall. They only ran the ball 18 times, 235 yards total offense. Bee Digger Player of the Game is brought to you by Cargill Beef. Cargill Beef is committed to feeding the world in a responsible way by reducing environmental impact and improving products and processes. Learn about Cargill's story of commitment at Cargill.com. Dave, there were lots of contributions out there, but I think for the second straight week, we've got to give the same player the player of the game. Yeah, Clay Shaver, 202 yards running tonight that's a lot of yards three I'll tell touchdowns, you what. Yeah. some big runs a lot of runs where you know he had to break tackles to make it happen and trust that offensive line and keep running the hole and not trying to make something of his own up and you know he, he played some team football out there behind a, a good offensive line that offensive line did a good job tonight and Matos Garcia also had a very good game on the ground and Aaron Williams had his share of carries yeah, Maltos Garcia ended up with 117 yards on 17 carries. Williams had 51 yards on 12 carries. Mott threw the ball a grand total of, uh, let's see here, eight times. He completed two of those with one interception. But the big story is 380 yards on the ground, uh, 37 in the air for 417 yards offense. That's a winning formula, and the beat diggers were able to pull it off tonight. Dave and I will be in Glenwood Springs a week from tonight when the Bee Diggers take on the Demons kickoff at 7 o'clock with replay to follow. And, of course, Bee Digger blast off, as is the case, always begins our coverage at 6 o'clock. That's a week from tonight. Sound engineer and producer of Brush Bee Digger football has been Rose Condis. A reminder, plenty of videos coming up on our KSIR B106 channel on YouTube. You can check that out during the weekend. Always follow us on Facebook, our 1010 KSIR sports page, as well on Twitter at KSIR Sports. And thanks to uh, owner, general manager Alec Creighton, who's been doing a great job, as always, on the replay as well. That's an essential part of our coverage, Bee Digger Replay. Sponsored by Corf Continental, your GMC Chevrolet and Buick sales and service provider. Pre-owned Supercenters, ready to serve you in Sterling, Yuma, Julesburg, and Fort Morgan. Find them at CorfAutoGroup.com. For Dave Urig, I'm John Beltran. The final score from Keensburg tonight, Brush 36, Weld Central 19 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.